Are you ready for the day that you go to the store and walk down the aisle and products start talking to you? That day is here. Hi, I'm Tanya Hall with ZDNet, and our guest today is Peter Oberdorfer. He is the president of Tactic. What is Tactic? Tactic uh, is a company that creates immersive experiences in real time. Uh, we concentrate a lot on augmented reality, virtual reality, mixed reality, and other emerging formats. Uh, we also do installations and uh, anything else that our clients can bring to us in that sort of realm. So it's, it's a lot of fun. We try to invent solutions and custom software for people, basically. Now, I have to set the stage. You're actually in your offices in San Francisco in a conference room uh, because you work in a very collaborative, open workspace. Talk a little bit about managing that kind of environment. Well, it's like very multidisciplinary, actually. We have, you know, everything from concept artists and art directors to animators to game engine and game engineer type uh, people to core engineers and web designers. We do a little bit of everything, honestly, and there's a lot of multidisciplinary people as well. But, you know, despite the kind of circus atmosphere that is, you know, when you have the trapeze artists and the line tamers and all that kind of stuff, like we all kind of know what each other does. So usually when a project comes in, we all know our roles. And um, it, it's a lot like feature film work, honestly, which is where I come from. I was a visual effects person for a long time uh, working on Hollywood features, but now we've, a lot of us have migrated into the digital realm and are sort of applying our wares that way. And it's been a really fun ride because uh, the Bay Area is full of this kind of work and it's both challenging and creatively rewarding for all of us. I'm sure that's a pretty interesting uh significant change for you. I mean, you worked in, in movies or, or in, you know, t television animation to, to working with brands, right? About how they're going to actually implement augmented reality. What's been the biggest challenge as someone be in the creative side to actually make that, what's the biggest challenge to talking to brands about why they might need to use this kind of uh, future marketing tool? Well, I mean, I think, you know, at first, it was really challenging to talk to them about something that not many people had experienced and, not, and was really an emergent sort of early stage thing. So a couple of years ago, when we're trying to sell something like augmented reality or virtual reality to people, hardly anybody had headsets, hardly anybody had seen augmented reality, um, you know, on a phone or anything like that. And so you go into meetings kind of talking about the promise of it and showing a few demos, but people had a hard time making the leap to be like, how would somebody out on the street use this? Since then, you've seen all of the major technology companies, you know, Alphabet, Google, uh, Facebook, uh, Apple, you know, uh, everybody is sort of coming out, you know, all the social networking platforms like Snapchat and whatnot. They're all coming out with either augmented reality, virtual reality in 360, or both as part of their solution and offerings, as part of their platforms, as part of uh, their medium. And they've, all, you know, Zuckerberg and Tim Cook and all these other folks have said this is the future. And so they sort of print reality in a way. And I kind of feel like when they say that that's what their hardware platforms and their operating systems are going to be about, that begins to motivate the audience to look for content. And that's what's happened. And so in the past, I don't know, month or so, we've gotten hundreds of thousands of downloads of our latest augmented reality app, when probably two years ago, the same app might not have had that type of impact. And we're seeing that growth be really explosive. And a lot of our media and outreach doing this is done for us by the Zuckerbergs and Tim Cooks of the world. Because they're saying, you know, the new iPhone is all about augmented reality or Facebook's future is in virtual reality and we bought Oculus and all this sort of thing. And so for us, that sort of validates our vision as a company and what we think the future represents. Uh, because it eventually, you know, I think the audience catches up and, and then content becomes something that's really important because people are 
investing in these technologies in the hardware side and operating system side and platform side, but then they want to see, see content. And branded solutions are great because it allows us to play in a lot of sandboxes. We can move across these mediums, really discover how they work, experiment with content, but it's all short form. So we're able to work through a lot of these things and understand how it works and then offer those to brands and customers uh, as, as we move through them. You talked about the success of your last campaign. Was that the one that you worked on with 19 Crimes? Yes, that's correct. And, um, and uh, it's continuing onward. Like we've noticed in the past couple weeks, it's spiking, you know, so it's really, um, yeah, it's really uh, moving forward in a way that we couldn't have even anticipated just organically and virally. Um, and I think a lot of it coincides with the release of the iPhone 10, for example. People are really like, okay, well, what is augmented reality? Where can I see it in my daily life? And so this becomes one of those examples where people, there already was a fan base or a customer base for this product, and they were interested in finding out about the backstory. In the case of 19 Crimes, it was a backstory of the Australian settlers and you know, the initial penal colony history of Australia and the story of all these sort of amazing people who went and traveled by boat and got to Australia. So we tell that story in augmented reality by having the bottles talk to you about it. And each of the characters representing on the bottles, when you hold your phone in front of it, they begin to speak about it. And that's a way of connecting to a brand that people never really had before. Convicted of crime 18, spurred the hangman's noose, banished to Australia. I found true love in the most unlikely of places. It's at the point of sale. Um, it's, a, it's something that engages people with the brand. They want to find out more, they want to collect more of the experiences. And these are things that happen in the retail space. So I think in that sense also, it re-energizes retail space to have products activate this way. And that's something that I think is needed in this day and age and this technology can contribute to. You know, you talked about a huge increase in, in uh, activity with this. And I think, you know, people are very interested in, you know, augment, augmented reality, how it's affecting them. I and mean, I, I rushed out the minute I, I actually saw it demonstrated on Facebook. I went out and bought a bottle of the wine I was just showing you myself because actually I bought like a case of it because it was so exciting. This idea that you can actually connect to a brand at a retail space. But, you know, I was also a big fan of Pokemon Go and <laughs> for like a couple of weeks. And right. I got really into that. And I think people are, the average person is more interested in augmented reality, right? I, you know, it's really funny because it's sort of, uh, I guess, sort of an insular nerd and all this stuff. I was really just into how I experienced all of these things. And so I was super into virtual reality from like, early days, like from the first Kickstarter of Oculus, it just blew me away. But what I think I lost sight of a little bit was that I had to buy the $300 headset and then the $500 headset and then the $700 headset. And I had a way of feeding into that because that was my, that was my, you know, what I did for work. So I was, you know, using this stuff and just amazed on this premium equipment that we have, what the experiences were. But what I think I lost sight of a little bit was you know, where's the user base? Where's the millions of people? And the thing that's great about augmented reality is that every, everybody, virtually everybody, is carrying around the technology they need in their pocket. And that's part of what made the tipping point of Pokemon Go inevitable. And now that these phones are, you know, a year or two beyond that, they can do amazing things. They can track reality into the environment. They can have you interact with it. All these things you can do that don't even begin to reach the full potential of what mobile platforms can do at times. I think it's really an open canvas for us to explore how these things can work, how we can network shared experiences, um, 
you know, how we can interact with these things. Like all these things, it's a new medium, really. It's it, because it's so pervasive. It's something that requires no extra purchases. It's essentially free above and beyond people having a phone. And, and so that is big. And then once you create a, a user audience, then it become, begins to feed on itself. You begin to get into things with like um, user generated content and, and communities that use these things. And I think that's what VR has tried to, and to a certain extent struggled to achieve. So I think it's gonna grow a little more slowly. And I think each of the mediums face challenges technically as they grow, but the growth of both at this point is inevitable. And I think we've seen VR sort of level off and not shrink. And then AR has exploded. And then it, we'll start to see more and more fidelity in these equipment until they begin to merge into what we call mixed reality a few years down the line, where augmented reality, virtual reality, mixing these things together, putting virtual environments in real places, these will all be things that we do with a standard uh, uh, platform. And that might even involve changing what we think of as mobile phones and wearables. You know, all these things are evolving together. So it's an exciting time. And I think being able to make content for it is always a challenge because we're always learning about what the next platform is and things like this. But it's, it's a real opportunity too, to be a storyteller and to uh, be at the forefront of something that no one is an expert in at this point because it's so new. You know, it, it is, and and I would agree with you. The the usability is so much easier with mobile. So you said this is going to really take off, change in the next couple of years. You know, to me, I I think it should change immediately. There's some big hurdles that we have to overcome. What did you What do you think is our biggest obstacle for augmented reality uh, as it relates to brands and incorporating it? Is it the platforms? Is it the the is it the mobile devices? Is it content creation? Well, I don't always agree with, you know, what the sort of the marketing side of what Apple says about, you know, what the best user experience is. Uh, but Tim Cook did say that the best augmented reality experience is on the phone itself. And I would agree. I mean, there are things like HoloLens and other headsets like Meta and things like this, they're all amazing, but I see those as really growing in enterprise and institutional and educational uses, because right now the price point of those, one of the challenges, as you mentioned, is, you know, they cost $3,500 or $1,500 or something that's just above what a typical consumer would buy. And so a lot of augmented reality faces the same HMD headset challenges that virtual reality does at its highest end. And then I don't think that the actual fidelity of it increases in line with the increase in cost yet. So we're really waiting for, I think, things that look more like our glasses that overlay reality on top of them that are at an affordable price point. And I think that's four or five years away. Um, but I do think that, you know, we're, with the way it works on mobile devices now, is quite compelling and quite easy to use. So I think we've got now a dearth of content and that's gonna be sort of the soft ground for, for the growth of AR that's gonna allow it to move into the forefront. And then it will start to flatten and face its challenges once we really start turning that into wearables. That's where all of this tracking things in a real environment and making it uncannily real, those are hard, problems and that's something that's beyond content that's like really a platform problem and I don't think they're problems that won't be overcome but I think it's you know those things are a few years away and will evolve sort of on a slow burn while we have these more kind of amazing consumer experiences in the short term. Well, you, when you talk about consumer experience, I think you have every industry is going to have a challenge because right now you're seeing augmented reality in uh, automotive, you're seeing it in cosmetics, which are fun. But then when you think about the practical use in maybe pharmaceuticals or where you can really get true information, where you can maybe talk to a virtual doctor or, you know, augmented reality answer question Q&A on, on what you need. I mean, is that something that you are looking into? Is that something that you think is in your future? 
Well, we were, my, myself and some of my group were part of uh, external uh, lab uh, uh, at, it, that worked on early HoloLens prototypes with Microsoft. And, you know, some of the use cases were around things, as you mentioned, like healthcare or, you know, institutional and enterprise type of things. And I think that's really where the highest end of AR is going to take hold because it really does make sense for a hospital or something to have a piece of equipment like an HMD that is $3,500 and hooked up to a nice PC. That's where those types of costs don't matter as much. And that's where I think those types of use cases that you mentioned are really relevant, you know, for diagnosis and, you know, inventory checks and things like this, where you can find out about these things as you're hands-free and doing other things. And so I think that's, that's going to grow and grow, grow quite rapidly and maybe not have to wait four or five years. But where I do see a disconnect is where I go into the Verizon store or the T-Mobile store or whatever and get my $500 pair of glasses that do all the cool augmented reality things that we're trying to think about now, you know, those types of cinematic experiences or entertainment experiences aren't going to be available to us or branded experiences aren't going to be, be in this sort of form factor for several years at a price point that we can afford. And right now you're looking at hospitals, schools, universities, that type of thing more who can buy, you know, buy a set, of shared things for that institution rather than for individual consumer use. You're talking about some pretty rapid growth and you're in an industry where you're going to have to keep up and not only just from the, the technology side, how do you go, how do you find the right employees? How do you find the right team to help support such a fast and growing industry? Well, I, it's a good question. I mean, I think that we're, you know, I come from sort of the film side, a lot of the, tech that we do for film effects over the years. It was similar sort of uh, problem solving. And now the medium is essentially, I would describe it as real time visual effects. And we use gamified technologies like Unity and Unreal and uh, other types of uh, real time visualization engines to, for a lot of our solutions. And so that really is our paintbrush is using that as our primary medium uh, and making custom solutions around uh, game engines and visualization engines in real time. And then once, and then the equipment essentially changes around us. You know, one year it's the Connect, another year it's HoloLens, another year it's, you know, a mobile phone with an AR experience. But what, what our paintbrush is remains the same. And, the, you know, so we're still making visual real-time elements for all of these and the artists and technicians that do this are relying upon the same skill sets. So anybody who, who works in the game industry really or in visual effects is pretty well suited for this in terms of content creation. And then uh, we look at it as something that evolves but evolves around us and is more about what type of display or container we put this in. If someone wants to find out more about what you're doing, I mean, I'm certainly fascinated by what you guys have done. And I was a big fan of your last campaign. I was certainly one of those people that helped bump those numbers. Uh, if somebody wants to follow you, uh, Peter, how, how can they do that? Um, they can go to tactic.studio um, and they can see the 19 crimes uh, example that you brought up that we did with J. Walter Thompson in Treasury Wine Estates. Um, or, you know, they can also, um, I don't know, see the other work that we do out there as we're, we have a lot coming up in January. So we're working on uh, five other AR apps that'll be coming out in the new year, which we're really excited about. Yeah, and four different sorts of consumer items. So I, I say just stay tuned and we'll continue to make stuff. Please continue to make stuff. Thanks for your time and thanks for joining the show today. All right. Thanks a lot. It's great talking to you. Thanks again, Peter. And I'm Tanya Hall. You can find more of my interviews on ZDNet and Tech Republic.